the charts say there's a 40 pound difference between Tolu Smith and Guillermo Diaz Graham. And the tip is controlled by Mississippi State. Game two is underway. Mississippi State in the, uh, the whites, Pitt wearing the road black. Davis up top, off the screen by Tolu Smith, looking in. Moore, they want to establish Tolu Smith almost immediately. Three up top, it's good. Left-handed three by Shaquille Moore. We talked about how important he has been. Yeah, and a lot of times, even though Tolu Smith didn't touch the ball, he's drawing so much attention. Yeah, Shaquille came into the starting lineup after Mississippi State was 1-8 and eight during a stretch. Diaz Graham puts it on the deck, goes up, fires it off the glass, no good. The rebound by Hinson, and it's no good, and the rebound pulled down by Mississippi State. It would be interesting how Tolu Smith... Oh, there he goes. ...defends a um, young fella inside. <laughs> Well, we do know that he, he showed a lot of experience and maneuverability on that one. And the only way Diaz Graham is going to be able to neutralize that is to pick and pop and make some three. That's right. In fact, he had an open chance at a three early. Here comes Burton, kicks it out, hits it way downtown, and it goes in. It's a four-point play. Well, that'll change the first minute of the game. I love when we talk about and highlight players in our pregame, we talked about Tolu Smith inside, too strong for Diaz Graham, and then we highlighted three-point shooting from Pitt. Wow. Blake Kinson sat out two years when he was at Iowa State this year. An ACC second team selection. Trying to make this four-point play, he cannot. We asked Jeff Capel, we said, hey, did, did you expect he would have this much of an impact? He said, I definitely wonder. He said he was out for two years. A non-COVID-related illness. Field Moore along the baseline. They go up to Jeffries. Now the left side for Davis. Three is no good. And Tony Smith's going to be called for the pushing foul. He said there's a, there's a weight difference, even just a nudge of Diaz Graham is going to knock him to the ground. Yeah, that was definitely a foul. You're talking about a 55-pound swing. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Burton. Jeff Capel calls him kind of a throwback player. The screen by Cummings. They skip it to the corner. Cummings, quick first step, back to the corner for Elliott. Elliott baseline jumper, no good. Easy rebound by Matthews. That's going to be the key for Pitt. Since they don't really have any serious size inside, there are other ways that you can get the ball in the post. Got to be out of bounds. Pitt with the basketball. I actually like what they did there. They had Hinson on Tolu Smith. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Here's Nelly Cummings. We mentioned uh, he has NCAA experience from Colgate. He is a Western Pennsylvania kid, and it was always his dream to play at Pitt. Had such a great career at Colgate under Matt Langle. And this is a really strong defensive team, yes. Mississippi State. You're not going to get anything easy. That may be one of the easier ones you're going to get to. Yeah, that elbow jumper off the screen left him wide open. So we're tied up at five. Jeffries, former five-star recruit. He's got it up top. He hasn't scored the way they'd like him to, but he's played good defense. Davis sneaking his way in. Off the side of the rim, no good. And Diaz grab. But you see the tempo with Mississippi State. They're real methodical. Yes. They want to move the ball around. They're not going to take just quick, bad shots. That's not their game. They want to play at their pace. Cummings, fadeaway jumper, rimmed around. Is the pace what you expected it to be at this point? Exactly. Yeah. Davis. Tolu Smith. That's a tough pass. He's double teamed now in the post. Jeffries up top for three. Yes. Nothing but net. Of any player on the court, DJ Jeffries has some high level ability. He's been a little, you know, inconsistent, yeah. as efficient as he want to be. This kid was, as you alluded to, was 
seriously recruited by a lot of schools out of high school. Five-star player, Mississippi Gatorade Player of the Year, so he's capable. Well, and you say that because you recruited him also, didn't you? I did. Yeah. He left me at the altar. <laughs> Greg Elliott <laughs> made that three. Jeffries, step back beyond the arc. He'll take another three. It's good. Well, that's a great sign for Mississippi State. Yeah, Coach Jan said, you know, he makes those shots. He's the hardest working player on the team, loves the gym. Yeah, he said, even with his inefficiency, he said, and he would admit that he's been inefficient. Jeffries would. He said, he always sees him in the gym early in the day, always works on his defense, always works on his passing. Here's Burton, slips it underneath, and that shot is blocked from behind. Diaz Graham could not get it to go. Tolu Smith with the block. And that's when Mississippi State will try to run on opportunity breaks like this. Yeah, and Moore cans the three-pointer. He's got six. Well, they're raining threes right now. They got a six-point lead. Are you talking about the guy in Moore who thought about transferring, but he withdrew his name from the portal? Yep. And now he's playing in the NCAA tournament. Here's Hinson, runner off the side of the rim out of bounds. It'll remain pit basketball. So they came into this tournament at 26.6% from beyond the arc. It's the worst by an NCAA tournament team since 2010. That was Winthrop. But they, they've already converted four. And they average 5.2 per game. That's a beautiful shot by Burton. That's why he's a throwback. Makes that mid-range jumper. And with Mississippi State, if we were to say the team would start off the game with four three yeah. point makes, you, you would probably thought we were talking about Pittsburgh. William McNair checks in for the first time, so Tolu Smith is on the bench. Also, it is Tyler Stevenson. He's got the basketball. Jeffries has two threes. Shot clock is at nine. Along the baseline is Eric Reed. Here comes the double. Yeah, shot clock at two, and it's too strong. Ball's tipped out and saved by Shaquille Moore. And Moore for three short. And the rebound underneath by Reed. His put back is no good. And Cummings with the rebound. Still really haven't taken advantage of Tolu no. Smith. Right here is what they're looking for. Yeah, Diaz Graham for three. It's good. You mentioned it. He's got to step out and make those. Yep, because he's really not a switch guy. McNair is in, in that situation. He's, he's not a switch guy no. either. Baseline jumper short. Ball is loose. Diaz Graham with the rebound. Here comes Burton. Long pass cut off. Stevenson was in the right place at the right time. DJ Jeffries, little hover. I will say Jeffries has a, a really good pro body. Ball's deflected. And now Elliott up the floor for Pitt. Pitt 22 and 11 this year. 14 and 6 in the ACC. Jeff Capel was the ACC Coach of the Year. Cummings, a little hesitation. Elliott. Partially blocked, gets it back. Cummings thought about a three. Guillermo Diaz Graham is inside, no good. He thought he was defended better. Catch it high, finish high, yeah. go straight up. He was wide open, he got a little confused there. His brother's about to check into the game for the first time, probably for him. Reed, 18-footer, no good. And Diaz Graham with the rebound. His twin brother. His twin brother. <laughs> yeah, one of six sets of twins playing college basketball right now. Burton splits the defense outside. Jumper for three, no good. And Jeffries will try to end this quiet last two minutes for both teams. Moore, bounce pass to McNair. That's a tough pass. Yeah, it was behind him. Yeah. And sometimes... You can go up for like a little floater and float a lob. That's better than throwing a quick, short bounce pass to a big guy. We've got four minutes without a field goal, from, or five minutes without a field goal for both teams. Elliott, a little hesitation, and he's bumped out of bounds by Eric Reed. They're really good. We knew going in they could really shoot the ball, and they're as advertised. We've got to do a better job on the ball. We've got to not help so much on the drives. We're coming off guys that can really shoot the ball, and they're uh, they're exposing us a little bit. All right, have a great rest of the half. Thanks, John. You know, his team is shooting the ball well from beyond the arc. There's no doubt about that. But this little run by Jeff Capel's Panthers uh, have brought them back within one. 
Pitt will inbound the basketball. We mentioned that uh, Jorge Diaz Graham is in for his brother. They go outside to Cummings. Cummings into the paint, caught. Gets it outside for Hinson. Hinson, quick step, eight on the shot clock. Too strong off the glass. And the whistle blows. Had a foul called against Mississippi State and McNair. And, and that's what Coach Jans was talking about. Straight line drives, close yeah. out the contain. You got to go at the first two or three dribbles. But they're getting beat. They're sucking in off the wrong three-point shooters. So that's exactly what he's talking about. They got to do a better job in their closeout rotations. Hinson's first free throw is good. Play the official bracket games of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness men's and women's bracket challenge games are here. So get your bracket started now at play.ncaa.com. Tied at 14, Avery. Yeah, not as many fouls <laughs> as the and first game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a record-setting number of fouls that were committed by Southeast Missouri as Pitt takes its first lead of this first half. I guess Pittsburgh was watching. They haven't committed a foul. That's right. Iowa State will wait the winner of this one. It's a good matchup, too. Whoever wins this one. To the corner for Stevenson, up top to Davis. Shot clock is at 10. Stevenson at the free throw line. Over to Sean Jones. Has it blocked away. Burton got his hand on it. It remains Mississippi State basketball, but it's a tight window. Just six on the shot clock. Yeah, nice job here. Closing out to the three-point shooter in the corner. Stevenson wasn't going to really try to score the ball inside. He's more of a passer. He's not a three-point shooter. No threes on the year. Tolu Smith back in. Bulldogs old for their last six. They're going to try to get it to Smith at some point with six on the shot clock. You no, know, look for a little back pick here. Look at Je Jeffries coming off. They oh, nice pass. Matthews in the paint. Shot clock at three. And a foul called against Pitt. It'll go against Burton. Yeah, so normally it would be a back pick for Tolu Smith to come off. They ran one of their counters to try to get the ball back to the yes. inbounder. This is what you need during this time of the year. You can put in a couple of different out-of-bounds plays or sets that you haven't really run all year. Here's Davis up top. Little spin move, almost lost it. Matthews bouncing off Hinson. Ball is deflected. Oh, they're going to go Burton for a second foul. Yeah. Thomas Nunez, the official. Yeah, just when we were talking about Pitt, not fouling, if fouled on back-to-back -back plays. All right, so are you sitting Burton here, two fouls? Yes. Is it always that way for you? It depends on time, you know, with 10.55, you know, it's first half. You can think about bringing him back depending on the floor of the game. Mm -hmm. Jeffries can't get that one to go. And Cummings up the floor. 10.45 to play. Cummings into the paint. He lost it. Out of bounds, they say, and touched it last. So right now, one of Coach Capel's assistants on the sideline, they're counting every possession, especially on the offensive end, how successful they are with Burton out of the game. Right. Cummings will inbound. Cummings' younger brother, who's playing a state tournament game right now in Pennsylvania, is going to come to Pitt next year. He's going to be done after this season. And Hinson, big tight end, goes out for the pass. Got, a, got away with one because Mississippi State's philosophy is they like to put Tolu Smith on the ball, right. independent of who's taking it out. So Bandy, the sixth man of the year in the ACC. Shot clock is at five. He's in traffic. He'll let it fly for three. It's good. Well, he got away with one right there. He had the favorable matchup with yeah. Smith on him. And Little 10-0 run. Matthews tries to end it. Gets his own rebound. Lost the basketball. And it's out of bounds. It'll be Texas A&M basketball. So here on this last three, had a situation where he had Tolu Smith on him. And then he re-picked it and made a nice little fadeaway three with Sean Jones on him. All right, so now both teams with four three-pointers. The Sim State will inbound. They get it into Smith. Quick first step. Working against Jorge Diaz Graham. Actually, Skiemer is back in. 
Jones down low. Uh, was the blows. Offensive foul is called on the Bulldogs. Outstanding job. Look at all of the activity defensive here on Tolu. He's a big point of emphasis. See the triple team? Yes. Now he makes his passing lanes hard. And outstanding job giving up your body. Well, the two freshmen, the two Diaz Graham freshmen, are in the game at the same time. I'm talking to their uh, high school coach, Jim Carr, former assistant coach at Rutgers, said that uh, Jorge is a little more athletic, shoots from beyond the arc a little bit more. Elliott with his drive. Nope, offensive foul. So they've traded offensive fouls. Yeah, back to back charges. Well, the rules are simple. Win to get in. Tune in as NBA teams battle earn their spot in the playoffs. The NBA playoff play-in tournament begins April 11th at 7 p.m. Eastern on TNT. Yeah, once you drive and another defender steps up, you've done your job. Find one of your teammates. Stay away from that charge, turnover. Even if your teammate missed a shot, you can get an offensive rebound. And Moore missed that one, but he's fouled going up. I think that's Diaz Graham that they called up on the airboat. And just think about what Coach Capel shared when they're on defense. Post defense, they have to red double, double team Tolu Smith, triple team him sometimes. Yeah. But the number one point of emphasis, 1B, was minimizing paint drives. Not just scoring points in the paint, is where they're entering the paint. We asked him if, if there was any player in his conference that he could compare him to. He said, Baycott. Baycott yeah. from you, yeah, North it Carolina. Blink. Wow, what a year that they had in a bad way in going bad from way, a yeah. national championship game to not even making the NCAA tournament. Wow. Moore makes both free throws. That ends a drought of 547 between points for the Bulldogs. Sabandi up top. He just made a three. Two-point game, Elliott for three. It's good, count the bucket, our second four-point play. This would be the second four-point play attempt. Gets fouled on the three. There's confusion on Mississippi State's pick and roll coverage. They don't know whether they're switching, jumping out on the, they'll, they'll get that corrected in the next timeout. How about that? You go games without seeing four-point plays. We've seen two in this half. Elliott trying to finish it off. 88% for the free throw line. And he missed. So there have been two four-point play opportunities, but they haven't converted. Moore assessing. Moore, teardrop no good. Smith puts it back in. Little power move by Tolu Smith. He has four. Yeah, he's a walking double-double. He, he is a walking double-double. He won the Bailey Howell Trophy for the best player in Mississippi. They take all the schools in Mississippi and they give the trophy named after Bailey Howell. In fact, five of six years, Mississippi State's won it. Smith again, he draws contact to go to the free throw line. TBS is proud to be the only network that can bring you all new episodes of American Dad. The new season premieres Monday, March 27th, only on TBS. All right, Smith, as we mentioned before, 90% of his shots are within the restricted area, so it doesn't include the free throw line, where he's 59% for the year. Yeah, and coming into this game, attempted 246 attempts. Ah, that's a lot of attempts. That's a lot of attempts. Comes in with over 1,300 points in his college career. First team all SEC. Yeah. Coach Jens was telling us that at the SEC tournament, he has 62 family and friends. Amazing. That's a lot of tickets. That's a lot of tickets. <laughs> well, he's got five as he makes one of two. Cummings, no look pass. Gets it to Guillermo Diaz Graham, who brings it back out. Now this is the spread open pick and roll. 
There it is, pop. Yep, Diaz Grand has one. He won't get a second one. That's four rebounds already for Smith. Yeah. That's a lot of rebounds. Yeah, Coach Capel, I, I believe he's okay with that shot. Yeah. Give you a chance to get your defense set, but your defense getting set. It didn't benefit you by getting back that time. Now, Deshaun Davis. Davis goes to the free throw line. We enjoyed our sit down with Jeff Capel yesterday as Davis missed. Ball is tipped around. And it's saved by Shaquille Moore back to Davis. Into the paint. Over the hands of Diaz Graham. And Davis gets the bucket to go. 23 21. We enjoyed our conversation with Jeff Capel. You know, it was interesting. He was a head coach so young that he said that being an assistant at Duke after, you know, not succeeding for the long term at Oklahoma Virginia Commonwealth, he said it was the best thing in the world for him. He learned how to be a head coach again. Yeah, and learned from some of the other assistants yeah. that eventually became head coaches, specifically Chris Collins at Northwestern. Yep. Cummings can't get it to go. Moore's called for the foul. Kim Moore's had a good first half so far, despite that foul. Yeah, he's playing well, and not just on the offensive end, but getting after it. Look at this. Defensively, beautiful save. Man, I, you, yeah. or, you or I would be out for days after making that kind of <laughs> Nelly Cummings to the free throw line. Boy, 89% free throw shooter. He was second in the ACC in free throw percentage behind Miles Kelly of Georgia Tech that he just missed that one. And now the second shot. And Coach Capel talked about, you know, here's a kid that dreamed of going in the yes. pit. That's where he wanted to go and transfer. He got his degree at Colgate. Colgate doesn't have any grad programs, so he had to find somewhere else to play because he had another year of eligibility, and he just picks the pocket of Deshaun Davis. Cummings goes right in, lays it in. Excellent body control. That's a beautiful fundamental move. Kids that are watching this game tonight, you got to be able to use not only your strong hand, but your off hand and maneuver with your body. That was excellent. Triple team again on Smith. Trying to get through a double there. Up top, three, in and out. Ball tipped around and out of bounds. It'll be Mississippi State basketball. Nice job here. That's what he was in the right position. And those pick sixes, that's what you want when, yes. if you're Pittsburgh, not if you're Mississippi State. What do you have, John Rothstein? Well, Tom, we have seen Pitt's poise here against the stingy Mississippi State defense. We are seeing an exceptionally experienced team, and Jeff Capel has told me that this is a big reason for their success. Tom and Avery, Pitt's top five scorers are all in their fifth season. Right. Yeah, a lot of transfers helping out the Pitt Panthers, and they sort of gel quickly. A lot of times you don't gel fast when you bring in all the transfers. Yeah, not many teams can survive when when you're missing two of your better players, Federico, Federico and yep. John Hughley. Yep. Yeah, Hughley was supposed to be a big piece to this puzzle injured early this year. By the way, Shaquille Moore has 10 points. One point lead for Mississippi State. Cummings over McNair, no good. Jeffries with the rebound. Jeffries knocked down a couple of threes early. Murphy high arcing three, no good. McNair gets the rebound though, puts it back up and right off the front of the rim. And that's one of the things Coach Cable was talking about. It's a big team that they're playing against, lots of size. The team is outweighed on the front line. Yeah, they say that he McNair has shown flickers. Yeah. And he's a big man. Cummings again on McNair. Tried to three before. This time he's going to slip it inside. Shot is blocked by McNair. Diaz Graham didn't have a chance. He's That's a, more than a flicker. Yeah, he's had a hard time finishing inside the entire night. I think that was a good call by Kip Kissinger. And now, ATT 5G takes us above the rim for one of the best plays of the night so far. Nice little short pass and recovery by Matt Mayer. He didn't quit on the play. That's what coaches wants to see. That's that's what you call an effort play. Well, McNair will get a breather. Tolu Smith back in. Three-point game. 
Burton's back in also with two fouls. I guess that Jeff Capel felt like he needed more flow offensively. Yes. Cummings, his three is good. Got some space and got it to fly. They're going to consistently Pittsburgh run this five out where Diaz Graham, he's going to set pick and rolls and spread the floor. Sometime he'll roll. Ooh. Nice little jab step. We asked Nelly Cummings, uh, you know, how it was when they played Syracuse when all his old Colgate teammates came to the game. He said, well, I got them tickets. He said they were talking to me the whole game. Here's Jeffries for three. Tolu Smith with the rebound. Pitt lined up in the 2-3 zone. You got to be able to rebound out of the zone. And sometimes it's all about bringing an extra body down there to block out Tolu Smith. Yeah. Well, we've seen the triple team today. Burton with 420 to play. Through his legs with the dribble, got some space, but I think he was too wide open. He said my fault. <laughs> His footwork was all off. Jeffries outside. Jones for three. No good. Stevenson offensive board. They go into Tolu Smith. Spin move. Gets off his feet. Well, that was a good job by Diaz Graham. He stood his ground. And he got some help from Blake Henson. If you bring in Blake Henson from the weak side, you know, here's another guy with really good size. He can affect Tolu Smith's shot a little bit. Burton. Diaz Graham trying to force the action, a little air ball on the, the hook shot. That's not a win for Pittsburgh. No. You're putting Diaz Graham in a bad position. Tolu Smith. That's offense. Yep. Little elbow as he went to the basket. We're tied at 27. Mississippi State, by the way, has 10 offensive rebounds already. They average 12.8. And that's why they have 27 points because they've got these putbacks. Eight second chance points, 12 points in the paint. Yep, 12 to 2 in points in the paint. They went in the rebounds by plus 13. Yep. But I don't we didn't really expect Pittsburgh to out rebound Mississippi State team. No, I think Jeff Capel just wanted his team to be in the mix. Cummings asked for a screen. He's got a speed advantage against McNair. A little shake and bake. Kicks it out. So Bandy for three. It's good. He's got six. Beautiful hook pass. They got the switch with McNair. They didn't try to post up Diaz Graham. Nice, nice decision. Yeah, so Bandy's been a good transfer to Miami of Ohio. He's going to finish with close to 2,000 points in his college career. As Davis answers with his six point. Cummings leaves it for Diaz Graham. It's no good. And now Davis up the floor again. McNair really fighting for the basketball. And another offensive foul. We could have a record for offensive fouls called in this game. Give players credit for sacrificing their body. Here it is. Nice job here. Beautiful. Beating his man to the spot. When you work on shell drills in practice, and you could be four on four or three on three, you can't really hide in practice. That's one of the best ways to get a stop on defense is take a charge on the ball. All right, so one point game. Elliott just checked back in. Cummings. Well, that may have been partially blocked by McNair. Yeah, unfortunately, not a good decision. Decision in that situation. Nice little pivoting pass. He had a big guy open for a three. And Murphy into the paint. He shot Murphy, a top 100 recruit in 2021. He was banged up all last year. Average is three and a half. He has his first bucket. Kelly Cummings inside the paint. Trying to get everybody off their feet. Up top to Henson. Yeah, Keyshawn Murphy played 20 minutes against that last game against Alabama. That's his career high in minutes. Maybe giving him a little bit of confidence. Zimbabwe, Bondi goes to Elliott, and Elliott is fouled. 
So Bandy, I don't think he realized the shot clock was winding down. First foul on Keyshawn Murphy. Stay tuned for AT&T at the half with Adam Lefko, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, and Seth Davis. Live from Atlanta with analysis of the first half and the latest tournament news. Excellent move by Elliott. He was actually denied, Tom. So when you're denied, most players keep going further and further towards half court. You got to get to a point of no return where you have to go back, right. back cut. Excellent read by Elliott. Well, he has seven. Elliott, seventh in the ACC in free throw percentage this year. Spent four years at Marquette. Enters this tournament with 988 points, so. Speaking of Marquette, away. what a job Shaka smart. Shaka has been incredible. And to think, you know, he had Elliott, too. Elliott's four points away from 1,000. Elliott's found a nice home for the Pit Panthers. Jeffries outside to Murphy. Oh, he missed Tom Smith. He missed him early on. Extra pass to the left for Davis. It's good. Davis had a nice first half, too. He's got nine. The average is eight and a half. See, three point field goals, 12 combined between the two teams. Yeah, a little 2 3 zone here from little Mississippi up. State. Yeah, a little change up. Cummings trying to shoot over it, and he does. He splashes it home from up top. And you notice philosophically, both teams love to run pick and rolls to screen the top man on the zone against. Ooh. That's not a good shot. Well, that was a high lofting shot. Well, I don't know if he looked and saw what the clock looked like. Now a timeout call by Pitt. 35-34. One point lead for the Panthers with the basketball. 29.5 left here in the first half. And you got to be happy for Texas A&M Corpus. Absolutely. Texas, especially after losing last year to Texas Southern, where they didn't have a, a good second half. But tonight, they were solid basketball team. All right, so Pitt with a one-point lead over Mississippi State. Cummings. Couple steps in front of midcourt. Here comes the screen from Diaz Graham. He heel pop. There's the pop to the corner. He missed him. Cummings shot clocks at four. They go to the corner for Elliott for three. No good off the side of the iron. McNair with the rebound for Mississippi State. Here comes Moore. Bounce pass to Jeffries. Let's it go. No good. And that is the end of the first half as Pitt takes a 35-34 lead over Mississippi State in game two here today of the first four. Yeah, they played well in the first half. Both teams played well in the first half. I think a little bit more scoring than we thought between Pitt and Mississippi State, but Pittsburgh with the basketball to start the second half. Cummings looking in, Henson, he's got a size advantage posting up. They don't recognize it. And I I think they recognized it, but they just get couldn't it get him. it inside. Here's Burton, step back, jumper, no good. Jeffries with the rebound. He's got nine rebounds. Jeffries, he was fluid in the first half. Tolu Smith played just 11 and a half minutes in the first half. Here's Shaquille Moore, jumper's good. Well, Moore has played really well for Mississippi State. He's got 12 in this game. And the guys in the studio alluded to how he struggled in his last game against That's Alabama. Right. One for 11, much more effective tonight. He's averaging over 11 points per game since being put into the starting lineup. Nelly Cummings answers to give Pitt a one-point lead over the Bulldogs. Here's Tolu Smith, out of control, can't get it to go. Rebound, though, by Mississippi State. The ball did not hit the rim, so it doesn't reset the shot clock. Jeffries for three, no good, and whistle blows, and a foul on the floor. That foul, by the way, is on Burton, and for Burton, that's his third. All right, let's compare these two guys. Yeah, when you look at Tony Smith, you got to give Pitt's defense credit. We've seen the double teams and the triple teams. Mm -hmm. You know, they've even slipped in front of him, denied him from getting the basketball. Um, and then when you look at Henson, nothing easy, especially in transition. Davis for three, it's short. And 
Sabandi, who just came in for Burton, who has three fouls, brings it up. One point lead. Sabandi trying to get some space against Jeffries. Now here comes that pick and roll with uh, the stretch five. What I mean by stretch five is a five men that can pick and pop and shoot the three. He has Graham. Looks like he may have dragged his foot. Sabandi with the shot clock at five. Getting in the paint. Lost it out of bounds. It'll be Mississippi State basketball. Yeah, unfortunately that time Pittsburgh didn't have great spacing, but you got to give Mississippi State Absolutely. defense credit, man. They rotate. They're a tough, hard-nosed defensive team. You know, that's the first turnover for Pitt since there was 9.42 to play in the first half. I and mean, they've only committed three. Davis for the Bulldogs off the screen. They'll stop and drop. He has 11 points for Mississippi State. Yeah, that's that's Mississippi State's game. They want to be an inside-out team. They don't want to play outside in like Pittsburgh. Cummings, nice move. Sabandi for three, no good. Off the side of the iron, Matthews pulls it down. Bulldogs up by one. More hesitation, bumped a little bit. Out to Davis. Little shot fake leans in, whistle blows, and a kick. Pittsburgh thought that was a travel yeah. in that situation on Davis. He was a little bit out of control. Chris Jans, just love his story. Former JUCO coach. They actually practice at Sinclair, where he coached against them in the national championship game in 1988 when he was coaching in Jude. Yeah, he was at Kirkwood. Yeah. Zabandi running the floor, getting it to go. One point lead, he has eight. Okay, he said he was there yesterday while they were practicing, taking some photos, and the players were like, what are you doing? And he said, well, I beat these guys for a national championship. Before you guys were born. Yeah, so he goes, <laughs> I started sending it to my players. Ball's cut off, Hinson with the steal. Leaves it for Sabandi. Sabandi's going through the defense, literally right through it, an offensive foul. Nice job in transition, coast to coast, and now the charge. <laughs> Well, the good and the not so good. Yep, good and bad. And you got to take both the good and bad. These games are cyclical. Yeah. They're like roller coasters. You can't, you can't get paralyzed by fate. Here we go. Matthews on the alley-oop from Deshaun Davis. All right, so that's 14 lead changes now. You talked about it being cyclical as Mississippi State takes the lead by one. Yeah, you can't get too down on yourself if you fail. Failure is not final in these games. Only if you give up. Again, Pitt playing without Federico. Federico, their big man. It hasn't deterred Cummings from going into the land of Giants. Our buddy John Rothstein talked about at halftime how it, this game, maybe we thought it was going to be played in the 50s. Wow. Yeah, really. <laughs> the final score. That was an impressive play by Deshaun Davis. And the winner takes on Iowa State on Friday. Cummings trying to get some separation. Sabandi working against Jeffries. Sabandi loops it in, can't get it to go. Ball is loose. Jeffries comes out of it with it, comes out of the pile with it. And Jeffries is an elite defender. He can, he can switch off one through four. Mm. Diaz Graham called for the foul by Powerade in 1996. Mississippi State entered the tournament as a five seed, but marched all the way to the Final Four. Eric Dampier and Dante Jones led the Bulldogs to the program's only Final Four appearance, knocking off two seeds, Cincinnati, in the Southeast Regional Final. Now there is Richard Williams. You know, I, I did the Princeton games that year. It was my first year in the NCAA tournament, and Princeton knocked off UCLA, the defending national champions, and they had Mississippi State in the second game. And I think a lot of us thought, well, we're going to go to the Sweet 16. Uh-uh. They were a really good team, the Bulldogs. Well, Coach Williams and I have one thing in common. We both coached Eric Dampier. Uh -huh. Here's Smith, and he's called for traveling violation. 
Eric Dempier was a really good player that year for Mississippi State. What do you got here, Avery? Yeah, he got out of control, lost his footing. Five minutes into the second half. Mississippi State on top by one. Cummings. He's got 13 for Pitt. Zabandi. Again, Burton's on the bench with three fouls. Davis with some quick hands. Diaz Graham back to Sabandi. Shot clock's at three. It's a mismatch here. Yeah, he sped right past Smith, and that ball is blocked away by Matthews, but they call a foul on him. With the shot clock at one. The shot clock had, what, one second left on it? That was it. It's a bandy to the free throw line, 78%. Missed the first. That middle pick and roll with Tolu Smith involved has been problematic for Mississippi State. Yeah. Because do you want him to switch? You want him to drop back, get out and show. So it'll be interesting to see, especially when this game starts to get inside it, you know, within five minutes left in the game. Or maybe they'll play a little zone, change it up a little bit. Look at the lead changes, Avery. 16 lead changes, seven ties. This is number seven. Moore, a little hesitation. Stop along the free throw, free throw line. Tolu Smith spinning around, gets it off the back of the iron, and a nice touch to get it to go down for the Bulldogs. And what Diaz Graham gives up in weight, he makes up for it in length. Nice job by Tolu Smith to finish using his footwork shot fakes. Mississippi State has a special player in Tolu Smith. Chris Jan said that when he was hired he said listen I had to recruit everybody he said it made it a life a lot easier when Tolu Smith said he was going to come back what do you have John Rothstein well guys Tolu Smith who you're talking about right now has to get going Tom only seven points and six rebounds in his last three games entering tonight averaging 24 yeah. and 11 this is a big thing to watch down the final 13 37 of a tie game well he's going to go to the free throw line as Nelly Cummings called for a second foul he'll get two free throws and one of the things that coach Jan said about Tolu Smith you got to give him credit he's seen every double team yes on the man and he's a you know ferocious tough player inside he reminds him of a throwback guy Daryl Dawkins one word can change everything Shazam Fury of the Gods only in theaters this Friday rated PG 13 get tickets now yeah, the, the, the chocolate thunder comparison was really interesting because he would be able to get his own rebounds and put it back much like Tolu Smith does for Mississippi State. Don't mention chocolate time. I'm on the <laughs> dessert diet. Uh, I've kind of taken most of it from you anyway. <laughs> Nine points. Both free throws are good. Two point lead for the Bulldogs. Again, Graham Diaz getting a lot of the action. He and his brother, Diaz Graham, excuse me, he and his brother because of Federico, Federico being out. Cummings is tied up with Davis. And they're going to get Davis for the foul. But you notice on that last possession defensively, Mississippi State extended their defense, a little three-quarter court press. When you try to dribble this ball in front of a defender like on that situation, you maybe have to spin dribble, go between your legs, but just to present that ball in front of a guy that has quick hands. Hinson just directed Stevenson that he was too close to him on that inbounds. Kip Kissinger acknowledged it. Hinson wants it down low. He called for it, working against Davis. Davis with quick hands. And they're going to get Davis for the foul. That's his third. You know, Davis is a steals guy. You know, coming into his game, he had 50, 52 steals. He's had two plus steals in 18 of his 31 games. 
he is going to check out. Started his freshman season at uh, Oregon State. Led the Pac-12 in assists last year. The first Oregon State player to do that since Gary Payton. GP, are you with me? That's right. 13 minutes to play. Burke back in with three fouls. Working against McNair. Sweeps into the corner. Hinson has it blocked away. Good hands by Sean Jones. Yeah, outstanding job by Sean Do Jones. That's when you can do two things at one time. You can help on the roll and then sprint out and defend the shooter. Moore to the baseline for Stevenson. Back to Moore. Bounce pass inside. Shot clock under 10. McNair doesn't have the touch. Burton with the rebound. And with this lineup for Mississippi State, that's a charge. With this lineup with Mississippi State, obviously Jeffries made two threes early. But Shaquille Moore is really the only knockdown three point shooter. I love how these kids just give up their bodies. Yeah. That's that's a sign of unselfishness. So a lot of times when you get an assist and you make an extra pass, you hear people say that's unselfish play, but that's unselfishness. Well, for Burton, that's his fourth foul. How hard is it to teach that for a, for a player when he gets to college? It, you teach it with minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you reward players that take charges with more playing time. That's right. Here's Shaquille Moore to the corner. Three-pointer for Jones is no good. And the ball is kicked out. Kip Kissinger said, my bad. He originally ruled it was Mississippi State basketball that Sabandi had touched it. Here we go. Here's the battle. Yeah, McNair looked like he touched it last. Well, one thing we know, referees can't please everybody. <laughs> Under 12 to play. He has Graham setting the screen for Elliott to get him free. Pit down two to Mississippi State. Elliott to the basket. And McNair blocks it away, but a foul is called. And he's here to watch uh, Pittsburgh battle Mississippi State. Elliott to the line, makes the first free throw, makes it a one-point game. And you know he's awfully proud of Pitt tonight. You know, just their competitive spirit. Yes. And this was a team that wasn't picked to come in, in first or second. They were picked next to last in the ACC. And Jeff Capel's done an amazing job. Yeah, we asked Jeff Capel yesterday about that. He said, well, I wasn't surprised. He said, they were, meaning his team. He said, because they got a lot of confidence. And Jeff Capel's to his message to his team just be a good teammate right that ball was pinned on the backboard and here come the Panthers Sabandi off the bench the sixth man of the year in the ACC has it deflected by Moore Boy, this Mississippi State defense is just incredible yeah very good I know blocking foul is called on Shaquille Moore and you're talking about being a good teammate and in the right place at the right time Nice job by Diaz Graham. It was close. And you have to know even on the scouting report offensively, who are the charge guys for your opponent? That's another point of emphasis. Yeah, who's going to sneak in? Five. Cummings, five-second violation. He just looks over and says, that's five? Thomas Nunez, the official. 15 years, a Division I official, 10 NCAA tournaments. Nice switching here, communication. Probably missed a big guy inside. Yeah. Mississippi State with a one-point lead. Here's Smith, out to Moore, to Stevenson. 18-footer, it's good. It gives Mississippi State a 48-45 lead. And that was just a dribble handoff play to try to get Tolu Smith. Nice job with that mid-range shot. Hinson, high-low, blocked away. Jeffries blocked it, but Hinson cleaned it up and lays it in. Well, you can't get satisfied after you block a shot. You got to retrieve that loose loose ball. Yeah, because Hinson will get rebounds. He averages six and a half. Two offensive rebounds per game. 
Alex Smith gets it back to Moore, back to Smith, to Jones. Jam steps the free throw line. Stevenson, baseline jumper, got some space, no good. Nice job defensively by Pitt. You see, they're not really going to honor Tolu Smith when he's at the free throw line. His man is going to drop back to try to wait for his rolls to the paint because they know he's not going to take an outside shot. Yeah, more than 90% of his shots are taken inside the restricted area. Diaz Graham lost it out of bounds. Touched last by Mississippi State. So a little dribble handoff here. Now Stevenson, you can see the pop right here. Mismatch inside. Good weak side defense by Jeffries, but he's screaming at his teammates. Come on, yeah. let's get this loose ball. Davis back in for Mississippi State. Sabandi, shot clock at five. Sabandi, oh, he slipped. He traveled. He's lucky he didn't turn his ankle on that. Yeah, kind of blew a little tire on that one. Look how spaced the floor is now. Once Smith stepped up, the ball, you got to move that ball. Yeah. One point lead. Bulldogs on top. The right to move on to take on Iowa State. Davis looks in. Smith's working hard to try to get position inside. Yeah, you can hear Coach Jan saying move. Davis, little hesitation. Off the glass. High off the glass. He's got 15, and the Bulldogs' lead is to three. Yeah, his drives and getting downhill, putting pressure on the defense, it's been effective. Cummings trying to answer, reverses his field smartly, so Smith couldn't block it away. And Cummings is hurt. He's limping out after falling to the floor. A surprise here with the three-point shooting, but here's this little injury here. He's back in. He's just trying to keep himself loose. Yep. John Rossi was listening to Jeff Capel. What do you say, John? Well, Tom, Jeff just told his team, play with force. Everything we do has to be with force. And we're going to outwill Mississippi State over the final nine minutes. The word he kept using, force, Tom. Mm. Well, they just forced the 11th turnover for Mississippi State. So one point lead for the Bulldogs. Pitt with the basketball. Cummings off the screen by Henson. Cummings pull up Jay, no good. And Jeffries with the rebound. Defensively for both teams, it's all about attention to detail on the scouting report. What are you willing to live with? Davis, fadeaway jumper. Not an easy shot. Rebound off the hands of Matthews and out of bounds. And the key for Pittsburgh, they want to eliminate Tolu Smith post-ups. They will live with any of the other players attempting contested mid-range shots. Yeah, and that sort of formula has helped him to just six field goal attempts at nine points. Sometimes it's easier said than done. And again, Pittsburgh's playing without Federico Federico. And they've been playing most of the year without John Hughley. And we'll see which team gets in the bonus first. Both teams have five team fouls. Under eight minutes to play. Shot clock at five. Lost out of bounds. I believe Tolu Smith hit it last. We've reached immediate timeout under eight minutes to play. Well, how about this? Deshaun Davis from Mississippi State. Uh, he's got some flow to him tonight. Yeah, he's a determined driver. When you have a determined driver, you cannot get out of position. No angles to the basket. You can see the defenders here. They're on the side of of uh, Davis. You got to square him up. If your feet are not square towards the baseline and the sideline, and each, each baseline, that means you're out of position. Shot clock is at five off the inbound, and Hinson knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Mississippi State basketball. John, were you listening in to Mississippi State? I was, Tom. Chris Jans has told his team, guys, keep imposing your well and keep them away from the rim when we're on defense. Let's protect the rim and let's keep battling. Sooner or later, they're going to crack, Tom. Yeah, he, could, he continued to say that at halftime, too. There's the three from the corner. It's no good. Shaquille Moore. And Sabadney, Sabadney is able to go length of the floor and laid it in. And this game is definitely at Mississippi State's pace. Yes. 
but we'll see. Normally, you know, this year, Pitt has been an outstanding second half team. You know, they've averaged about 40 and a half points in the second half. Well, they pick up that rebound. As Smith dove to the floor to try to get it, Elliott knocked it loose. Coach Capel said the key has been adjustments that they make at halftime. Players get it into a better flow. Hits in, fadeaway jumper, no good. Matthews tries to run it down, he does. It's five on four. Jeffries into the paint, kicks it to Davis. And Davis loses it, slips it inside. And they'll reset the offense. They do so with Smith inside. Smith can't get it to go. Battle for the loose ball. Run down by Matthews. Moore. His runner is good. 14 points for Shaquille Moore. Yeah, Shaquille Moore has been very impressive. Nice little floater going to his strong hand. Unfortunately for Smith, he missed an easy layup, but fortunately his teammate bailed him out. The bandy from the baseline. He doesn't get the bounce off the rim, and the rebound is taken out by Smith. So one-point lead for Mississippi State. And now you can see Mississippi State methodically is going to walk the ball up the floor. They know exactly where they want to go. Here's a screen and roll. Smith's going to roll to the basket. I believe Pitt touched it last. That was Diaz Graham who touched it last. All right, so Burton comes back in. He has four fouls. Coming up next on True TV is Inside March Madness, presented by Buick. Adam Lefko, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, and Seth Davis of all the tournament talk and first four analysis. And a lot of times in situations like this, maybe you may hold Burton one more possession since they're on defense with the four fouls. It's a tough decision. And the turnover forced by Pitt. Here comes Cummings up the floor, stepping to the basket, throws it up, no good. Burton with the rebound. And a foul on the floor. Shaquille Moore's third foul. But you notice the spacing. There's no space. It's so tight because Mississippi State, they don't really spread the floor on offense. And now you can see that Pittsburgh's defense is shrinking even more. Well, Cummings will inbound. 20 on the shot clock, he gets it to Elliott. And Elliott falls to the floor and is fouled to the floor. But Mississippi State's pitch, they almost were at half court. Guess they thought he slipped on this one. <laughs> That's Cameron Matthews has called for his fourth. He's number four. Well, I don't know. He's going to have to check out. It's going to mean Stevenson's coming back in. And Greg Elliott to the free throw line. One and one opportunity. Elliott has nine points. And the front end is good. Foul trouble for Mississippi State. Matthews has four. Shaquille Moore and Deshaun Davis each have three. Yeah, that's the one you got to keep your eyes on. Shaquille Moore and Davis. Elliott rattles the next one home. It's a one-point lead, 53-52. We had a good game in game one. Texas A&M Corpus Christi advanced to take on Alabama. Tonight we've had 19 lead changes as Diaz Graham with the rebound. And that foul's going to go against Mississippi State. Pitts, Pittsburgh has been struggling rebounding the basketball, but give the big fella credit. Diaz Graham going up there, getting, mixing it up, getting involved in this boxing match inside. <laughs> He'll go to the free throw line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And he was born one minute before his twin brother. That's right. We mentioned one of six <laughs> sets of twins playing college basketball. Recruited by uh, Tim O'Toole, former head coach. He missed the front of the 1-1, one -one, so it remains a one-point game. Door is open for the Bulldogs to take the lead. 
Stevenson looking in. Jeffries to Moore. Moore off the high screen. Trying to split the defense. Knocked away by Cummings out of bounds. Boy, give Big Diaz Graham credit for jumping out. Look at him. Look at him. This is a big guy. He's seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. He's out there mixing it up. He has confidence to execute that pick and roll defense because he knows his teammates are helping him on the weak side with Smith. Shot clock is at five. Moore spinning through the defense. It's cut off by Elliott. Kind of an unforced turnover. And Jeff Capel barking out the signals for the Panthers. The ACC coach of the year, Diaz Graham, short on that three. And out of bounds. And I watched him yesterday in practice. You know what that shot was all about? Battling with Smith inside. It tends to wear your legs down. Mm. Well, a timeout call by Mississippi State. 3 uh, 53 52. Pitt is on top by one. Jeff Capel's wife is uh, back home because his daughter is playing in the state uh, tournament for uh, girls' basketball at high school. Pitt is on top by one, 53-52. Iowa State is the next opponent for the winner of this one. What do you have, John? Jeff Campbell just told his team, guys, we have to communicate on defense. We have to protect each other, and we have to do it together on the boards. We're shorthanded. One man is not going to help on the backboards against this team, Tom. They try to go back door. Mississippi State does. Smith off the hands of Jeffries. You know, we've mentioned this all night long. They're without Federico. Federico who averages seven points and six rebounds per game. And right here, this was a little play for DJ Jeffries to go back door, but obviously Smith is not one of the better passers on the team, so he's got a little excited there. 405 and counting to play here in the second half. Cummings, a little hesitation along the baseline, out to Burton. Burton to Elliott. Elliott, little shot fake, pull up jumper, good. And Elliott with a thousand points now in his college career. It's a nice milestone for anybody. Absolutely. 13 points tonight. And it's all about discipline. You, you see, you know, can you stay down on shot fakes? Jeffries, extra pass. Reed, three, no good. Rebound loose. Mississippi State with the rebound. Shot no good. Ball tipped around. Diaz Graham got his hand on it, and Cummings now comes out of the pile with it. And that's what John Rothstein was talking about. Coach Capel said, hey, we need all five guys in rebounding. We can't depend on one guy to rebound. 55-52, 3-10 to play. Hinson way downtown. He got it! Chris Jans calls a timeout. Largest lead for Pitt. All right, take us through this, Avery. Yeah, whenever you get a team in the bind, especially with penetration, so here it is, shot fake, penetration, nice pull up in that situation from Elliott. And now ball movement, and Henson shoots it from the parking lot. It's one of those situations as a coach, you're saying you're too far, you're too far. Oh no, <laughs> oh yes. It's the first three for Pitt in the second half. It's a 7-0 run. And now 3.05 to play. Let's see what Mississippi State can do. Chris Jans called the timeout. Here's a little sneak screen underneath the basket for Smith. I don't know how he found himself open. He missed it, though. He was too far under. It was just a, a, a really small window to get him that pass. Yeah, you can tell when they were setting that up. That's, that's a pretty common play that one of their go-to plays to try to get him deep underneath the basket. Cummings up top to Hinson, to Burton, looking in, nothing's there. He goes left wing for Elliott, shot big again. Outside to Cummings, shot clock at five. Elliott from the corner, off the side of the rim, no good, gets his own rebound. Smart play right there. The clock, because the clock is your friend, you're up by six. Now here's a pick and roll, Smith is involved. Now they're gonna attack Smith off the dribble. Five on the shot clock, Cummings for three, no good. And that'll go out of bounds. Mississippi State will get it back, two possession game, 2-0-3 to play. Yeah, that's not what Coach Capel wanted. 
You so every still gonna go to Tolu Smith here? No, I'll run pick and roll with Tolu. Okay. Run pick run a pick and roll. Because they've held him to nine points. Yeah. Run a pick and roll. Try to get, you know, some sort of a switch with Diaz Graham. Mississippi State scoreless the last four and a half minutes, and Tolu Smith is there. Well, they ISO in that situation, Davis and Smith man stepped up to help, but the play wasn't ran for Smith. It was for an ISO for Davis to get down here. 18th straight game with 10 points or more for the talented Tolu Smith. Burton up top to the corner. Elliott for three. No good. Ball tipped out. Here comes Matthews for the going block for the basket, and he can't get it to go. Knocked out of bounds by Burton. The block was coming from behind. For one thing, more than anything, offensively, you want shots at the basket. Yes. No turnovers. Off, and no offensive rebounds. The ball definitely went off Burton. Yeah, and then it, it actually hit Diaz Graham while he was out of bounds. Mississippi State with the basketball. Davis up top. Entry pass to Smith. Back to Davis. Mississippi State, they don't know how to react to this double team. Yeah, Jeffries for three. It's good. That'll pull him back within one. He has nine. Nice job, Jeffries. He was shot ready as he was early in the game when he knocked down his first two threes. Timeout called by Pittsburgh. We've got one minute left here in the second half. And we got a one-point game. Lead for Pittsburgh, 58-57 over Mississippi State. It's a 5-0 run for Mississippi State. Each team with one timeout left. You see the foul situation. Why did Jeff Capel call a timeout here? They, they were a little bit distressed because Mississippi State went to a little bit of a 1-2-2 trap. And they were in a tough spot on the sideline. Excellent timeout. I like the way Mississippi State changed up their defense. Now they're in straight man. Yep. Under a minute to play. You see 19 lead changes, nine ties. Cummings to Henson. Cummings looks up at the shot clock. He realizes it's at five. Into the paint. Fadeaway jumper. It is no good. In and out. Rebound by Mississippi State. Here comes Davis. Davis leaves it for Smith, who lays it in. Mississippi State with a one-point lead. Got to get back in transition. Mississippi State did an excellent job of scoring early in that possession. Oh. What a game. What a game. If you're Pitt, are you holding it here? No, I'm not holding it. I'm trying to get the best shot as soon as I can. Yep. Two-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Here's the ISO switch against Smith. Burton, his jumper. It's good. Pittsburgh back on top. Timeout called by Jeff Capel. 60 to 59, 9.8 left to play. Come on back. Let's check in with John Rothstein. What do you got, John? All right, Jeff Cable just told his team, be aware of where you are on the floor. And guys, smile, be happy. We are one stop away from advancing, Tom. <laughs> well, it might be a little too early to get happy. <laughs> 21 lead changes tonight, most in any NCAA tournament game since 2018. Well, it's college basketball the way you want it to be played, right? Yeah, and right now, this ball is going to Davis. Right. Pitt has a foul to give, but which I would use it somewhere around half court. Well, the inbound to Davis. You don't need to double team. Here's Jeffries to Moore. They do get the foul. Well, Moore was open, too. Yep. They foul with the pass. Smart, smart play. All right, so six seconds left. And now if you're Chris Jans, you decide who's going to take this last shot. Who yeah, is it? This is going to be an ISO in the middle of the floor. They're going to flip the ball back to Davis. They get it to Smith. Going toward the basket. Blocked away by Diaz Graham. It'll remain Mississippi State basketball. Plenty of time, 2.7. Right, so the play was set up to flip back to Davis out of bounds. Or dribble handoff. They want to make sure that it's actually 2.7. Boy, what a nice free time out here. Big time. So you see, on this last play, if we can go back. 
There was a little bit of confusion, but you could see Davis sprinting from out of bounds, and Smith just took off with the ball. Yeah. So they've decided that the clock is correct, 2.7. All right, so you yep. have to design now your best baseline inbound play. This will be some sort of a back pick for a lob. If the lob is not there, they'll run a shooter to the strong side corner. A little smirk from Jeff Capel. So it, in this situation, it could be Shaquille Moore sprinting to this left corner, but they're going to try to get Smith on the back pick. Here's your back pick. Davis. There it is. Here's Corner. four for three for the win. It is no good. Ball put back. No good. And Pittsburgh advances in the NCAA tournament. They win it by a final score of 60 to 59 over Mississippi State. It's their first tournament win since 2014.